This section 8.3 deals with trigonometry and in this section we are going to be using something called trig ratios uh, that allows us to find missing sides and missing angles when we're given missing or certain sides and certain angles. So there are three trigonometric ratios that we're going to use in this section and they are sine, cosine, and tangent. And what they are is a ratio of two sides of a right triangle. So here they are. The first trig ratio is sine. Sine is when you have the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Third ratio is tangent. Tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, so that you can better understand these trigonometric ratios, it's probably a good idea to know which sides are adjacent, which sides are opposite, and which sides are the hypotenuse. So if we draw a picture, I think that might help us better understand how these are set up. So first of all, we have to have a right triangle. For this section, we're only talking about right triangles. The trig ratios are based on an angle of reference. You're going to have one of these acute angles that's your point of reference. So let's say I'm talking about this angle right here. The opposite side would be the side that is across from this angle. The adjacent side is the side that's next to this angle. Adjacent means next to. In every right triangle, you're going to have a hypotenuse. In this case, it's the side, or in all cases, it's the side that is across from the 90 degree angle. So if you have the 90 degree angle, that's this side. So once again, the three sides that you need to know are all based on your point of reference. Where do you start? Which angle are you talking about? Again, the opposite side, draw an arrow straight across, that would be this side. Adjacent would be the side that is next to, so that's this side. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. Common mistake here is that people confuse the hypotenuse with the adjacent side. Yes, the hypotenuse is next to this angle, but first it's the hypotenuse. So don't ever label the side across from the 90 degree angle as adjacent. Be careful of that. Okay, now my point of reference isn't always this angle down here. What if it was the angle up here? How does that affect things? So let me label this and we'll talk about what the sides would be if that's my angle of reference. Which side would be opposite of that one? If I drew an angle across from this angle, that would end up down here. When I was talking about this angle, this was the adjacent side. But now since we're talking about this angle, this is the opposite side. Adjacent still means next to, okay? So what's next to this angle? Again, I don't want to confuse it with the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is adjacent, but it's not called the adjacent side. So the side next to this one would be this one. next part of this section that's really important, or as you solve it, you have to make sure your calculator is set to degrees. Uh, I'll show you how to set some of the calculators to degrees, uh, but realize that you are in charge of your own calculator, you're responsible for your own. You have to be able to make sure that it's in the correct mode so that you can solve these correctly. It's very possible that you could solve everything correctly, but if your calculator is not set to the right mode, you'll get all the wrong answers. So the important thing to remember, calculators must be set to degrees. Okay, for this next set of examples that I'm going to do, uh, these are finding missing sides in a right triangle using trigonometry. So we'll find angles in the next section, but for this section we're going to find missing sides.
something I recommend you do off to the side of your paper, at the top of your paper somewhere, is write down the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios so that you can reference those as you're writing out your problem. So here you go. When doing this type of problem, again, the first thing you should do is find your point of reference. What angle are you given, or which one can you use? Which sides are you looking for? Which sides are you given? So if I look at this picture, 54 is my point of reference. To figure out whether it's sine, cosine, or tangent, I've got to figure out what side W is and 17. So I'm going to label it. So the side W, that's the opposite side. 17 is the hypotenuse. Notice here that they don't even ask for the adjacent side. They don't give me the adjacent side, so I don't think I'm going to use it. I'm going to use the trig ratio with the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So as I go to my list, which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? It would be sine. This is such a common question that I get. It's Mr. Schmidt, I don't know whether to use sine, cosine, or tangent. If you have not listed your sides first based on your angle of reference, I can't help you with that. So make sure you do this first. And then, of course, if you have a blank side, don't list it. So in this case, it's sine. Okay, now once you've established that we're going to use the opposite side and the hypotenuse and that we're going to use sine, set up your equation. Don't be in a hurry to solve it, just set it up. And so here's how you'd set up this problem. I know I'm using sine, so it's sine of the angle, and it's equal to the fraction of opposite over hypotenuse, w over 17. Now to solve this, we're just going to solve for w. First step would be to multiply both sides by 17. So my answer is 17 sine of 54 degrees. All you have to do is plug this into your calculator just like it is. As long as your calculator is set to degrees, you will get the right answer. If I punch this into my calculator, I get 13.75. I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. And there you go. If it doesn't specify where to round, usually you're safe at least to round to the nearest tenth, maybe to the nearest hundredth. Okay, one more example on how you find a missing side using sine, cosine, or tangent. Again, the question I always get, which one do I use? I don't know whether to use sine, cosine, or tangent. My recommendation, label your sides first. 33 is your point of reference, 4.5 is the hypotenuse, W is the side next to 33 that's not the hypotenuse, it's the adjacent. Which one of these three uses adjacent and hypotenuse? This time it's cosine. So here's how I would set up my problem. It's always sine, cosine, or tangent of my reference angle equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. If your calculator is set to degrees, all you have to do is solve for W and you're done. Four point five cosine of thirty three punch this into my calculator. W is approximately 3.77. If they ask me to round it to the nearest tenth, three point eight would be my answer. Again, the most often asked question I get is I don't know whether to use sine, cosine, or tangent. So for this second example, uh, let's draw our picture, let's find our reference point label our sides so we know which one of these three we'll be using. Now this one sets up a little bit differently or at least it solves a little bit differently. You could do it a couple of different ways. So I'll show you two different ways to solve this one. So we'll start with the picture.
Okay, once again, sine, cosine, and tangent is based on the reference angle that you're given. I'm going to use this angle, it's labeled. So first thing I'm going to do is label my sides. Again, the side opposite, if you draw an arrow across, it would be the opposite side. The term adjacent means next to. Notice here, this is completely blank. So I don't think I'm going to be using this. They didn't ask for it, so I'm not going to be using the hypotenuse. Which one do I use? Well, which one uses opposite and adjacent? For this problem, we'll be using tangent. The next thing you should do is set up your problem. Okay, this problem can be a little bit more difficult for people because the W is on the bottom. So that adds an extra step to my problem. So first thing I have to do is get the W out of the denominator. And to do that, I multiply both sides by W. You can think of W as being a divider. The inverse of dividing is multiplication. So on this side, I'm left with W tangent 28 degrees. Now, remember for this problem that you want the W by itself. This is W times tangent of 28. So to get rid of this, I'm going to use division. On this side, these cancel. Get approximately 33.85. Now again, this extra step of getting the W out of the bottom, I'll show you another way to do it. Maybe that's not so complicated. Maybe it's a little bit easier for you. So you can use either way when you solve a problem like this. Okay, another way to solve this, if you don't like to, to worry about the W being in the bottom and multiplying both sides, just think of this as a fraction. This is tangent of 28 degrees. Think of it as tangent of 28 degrees over 1. Now, since you have two fractions that are equal or a proportion, you can cross multiply these to get your answer. So these two, I multiply these two. Next step, this is W times tangent of 28. I'm going to undo that multiplication with division. Remember, whatever you do to one side, make sure you do it to both sides. Again, plug this into your calculator. Make sure your calculator is set to degrees. It's the same answer that we got before. So if you're more comfortable with this, feel free to do that instead of multiplying both sides by W.